All right, now this activity in uh, this particular uh, drafting problem uh, is trying to get you to look at and understand the difference between a what is referred to as a normal surface versus a foreshortened surface. Now, uh, we've talked before about what's a normal surface, and that normal surface is when we are looking directly ahead or directly in line with an object and the surface that we are looking at is basically forms a 90 degree uh, or perpendicular line to what we are looking at. So for example, um, I have this particular part, I don't remember what it's from, but uh, so as I'm looking at this, this is at uh, this is looking at it normally, uh, i.e. my eyesight is directly, the way my eyesight pierces that is 90 degrees. Now I can make this foreshortened by turning it this way. And now uh, this is no longer 90 degrees to my eyesight, it is at some type of an angle. Uh, if, of course if it's this way it would be the same way, so I'd have to bring it back in here to be normal or what's called a normal surface. So. Um, again, maybe that wasn't the best example. Let me uh, use one of these uh, narwhal cards here from the uh, game Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza that my family has been playing. Um, notice I am looking directly at this. Uh, my eyesight is 90 degrees to th this plane. Now, if I make this foreshortened, I will turn it where it is no longer at 9 90 degrees and I can be foreshortened this way. Notice here I see this full dimension. Now it's called foreshortened because as I turn that at an angle, do you kind of see how the distance between those two edges shrinks or becomes foreshortened? So that is what we're talking about here. Normal versus foreshortened. Now I can also do it this way. Normal versus foreshortened. So normal foreshortened, uh, just using these cards to kind of demonstrate the difference. And, and that's what this particular one is all about. And of course, identifying uh, these particular uh, views and the relationship between the two. So, so we're going to start out here. Uh, I'm going to do the gadget corner block. And then of course, you guys will be able to come back and uh, do the thingamabob wedge. So so I'm going to kind of start with some colored pencils here. So we're going to start number one as I'm looking at that top view here. So I'm going to color this in. You'll see that. And we look at uh, where that is. And of course, number one is A right up here. So, so, so your answer to number one there is A. So you just fill out that mark it on your worksheet. Now... Uh, again, looking down at the top of that picture, uh, if I start looking here, the next thing I see looking normally is D. So, and I don't know, maybe this is normal and would be true size and true shape, or maybe this is foreshortened. So I come back up here, well, and I can notice two here uh, relates to C. So, and I can tell this is indeed a normal surface. So C is indeed a normal surface, um, and that would be true size and true shape. So now, the next thing I see here in my top view is number three. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at number three. Uh, and up here, as I'm looking down in this view, uh, I see number three relates to D, and I can tell here uh, from my isometric drew drawing um, that D uh, is at an angle, it is inclined, so three would actually be uh, foreshortened. So even though it looks like a uh, square, it is not. That is not true size or true shape. Uh, because that is at an angle going down that way. So that's the relationship there with D. Now, that leaves me here with number four, trying to determine what number four is. So again, I'm looking down here, and I can see, well, again, I've got another foreshortened view. So number four 
is actually D. So I'm going to color in four here. So now you don't need to co use color pencils or color this in. I'm just doing this to hopefully help you see uh, these and solve these problems as you're doing it. So you just need to kind of write the letter uh, that matches that number. So for number four, that is going to be surface G. Now, notice in the top view, what aren't we seeing? Well, we're not seeing B, surface B. We're not seeing surface E or surface F. But hopefully, at this point, you are recognizing and noticing uh, where those come in. So, surface B is right here uh, at this line. So, so surface B, in this view, uh, is seen as a line here in the top view. Surface E, right here, is seen as a line right here in the top view. And surface F is seen as a line right here in the top view. So that's the relationship. We've solved those. Let's move on to uh, number five. Now, number five is my front view, and that means I am looking at that, my line of sight, or my normal uh, view, is right here going at this direction. So, and at going this way, you can see, well, number six is actually... Uh, the same as three and again in this regard it is foreshortened once again it is not true size or true shape so so number six is number D now that brings me to the next part so which is five and looking at five so again just from this front view, I can't tell is that true size and true shape, is that normal or foreshortened until I look at my isometric and I see that the relationship here is B. And now I can see that that is indeed uh, in this view uh, is longer, um, so I can tell, well, this is definitely foreshortened uh, because it's not showing the same size. So. All right. So lastly, so on number seven, I'm also looking at here, I got to try to determine what this surface and whether this is true size or true shape, uh, normal or foreshortened. So looking up here, number five, or F, number seven is F, and I can tell, all right, yes, that is true size and true shape. I am looking normally. In this front view, I am looking normally at that. Uh, so that is uh, definitely true size and true shape there as well. So that brings me to uh, the last uh, side view here and what I am seeing. So again, starting here with number uh, nine. So as I'm looking at this view and my eyesight looks this way at it, which would be normal in the side view, I can see that number nine is actually representing surface B. So that will be surface B. Is this normal view or is this foreshortened? Well, it is definitely foreshortened here as well. So, so you notice it's seen as foreshortened both in both of those views. So now continuing to look uh, at number eight. So number eight is a one that we haven't gotten yet. So we'll go ahead and color that in. And as I look at number eight, you can see that that is surface E. And from our side view, we are looking at that, and that becomes a normal surface, so it is true size and true shape. Uh, it is a normal surface uh, that we see. So eight goes along with E. Or, I'm sorry, that is number nine. Yeah, that's number eight. I got ahead of me. This is number nine. This is number eight. So uh, eight is E. And that brings us to the last one, number 10 which again at this point hopefully you can see uh, uh, where 10 falls in and 10 is G so we're looking at that 
now. Um, so that brings us, and I have a question now about J and H and where J and H fall in. Well, J here is actually pointing to this back surface that we can't see from our viewpoint. So, so J is still back there. Uh, we can see the line that's formed by that surface, but we don't really know what that surface looks like because we're not seeing it yet. And of course, H uh, over here uh, is right here in the front view. So uh, is this surface here shows itself. So that's H right there. If you think about it up here, H is this surface and J is this back surface here that's hidden behind there. So you don't need to have those. Those aren't uh, numbers 1 through 10, but I just wanted to point that out uh, to you to kind of some, sometimes get questions, well, what is J and what's H and why are they there? Uh, just to kind of show you the relationship on the drawing. So anyway, that is how we do the gadget corner block with these normal and foreshortened views uh, and the relationship of these surfaces uh, in our isometric with the surfaces or the um, lines and shapes that are in our uh, multi-views and our orthographic projections. So now you go ahead and uh, work and try to figure out uh, what those will be with the thingamabob wedge as you go forward um, and do this assignment.